One of the most iconic species of the North American continent is the wolf. It has an imposing presence, and its intelligence and socialization make it a formidable predator. However, a species that was once one of the most widely distributed land predators now inhabits just two-thirds of its historical range and in much fewer numbers. But this apex predator has never inhabited South America. Today we ask the question, why are there no wolves in South America? There are currently around 80,000 wolves across Eurasia, 60,000 in Canada and thousands more in Alaska and other parts of the states. However, there are several reasons why grey wolves don't inhabit South America. Ecological Niche As apex predators in their environment, wolves are pack hunters that keep everything else in check. However, their ecological niche has already been filled in South America. In fact, South America has the most diverse group of wild canids in the world, home to 10 different species. A single ancestor migrated into South America across the Panama land bridge around 3.5 million years ago, spreading and diversifying across the continent. It took just 2 million years, the blink of an eye in evolutionary terms, for the 10 species to emerge. One of these species is the maned wolf, which stands up to 110 centimeters, 43 inches tall, weighs 23 kilograms, 51 pounds, and hunts alone, but it is not a wolf. It lives in Argentina, Brazil, Bolivia, Peru, and Paraguay, with just a few individuals left in Uruguay. This species looks more like a long-legged fox with reddish-brown fur, but it is also not a true fox. Instead, it is the only species in the genus Chrysocyon. Other canids include the short-eared dog, crab-eating fox, bushdog and the hoary, pampas, sekuran, and Darwin's foxes. These species are mostly omnivorous. They manage to live on the same continent by occupying different habitats. The short-eared dog is found in the Amazon rainforest eating a wide variety of prey, from fish, insects, small mammals and birds, to fruits, crabs, frogs, and reptiles. The crab-eating fox, on the other hand, inhabits mostly savannas, woodlands, and subtropical forests, hunting for crabs on muddy floodplains during the wet season, but turning to a more varied diet at drier times of the year. Although the territories of South America's canids occasionally overlap, there are plenty of resources and differences in their dietary preferences to keep competition limited. This allows them to occupy the same continent. But the wolf probably wouldn't be able to do the same. They are less flexible in terms of dietary requirements. Aside from the wolf's ecological niche already being filled by a large number of other canids, there are other reasons why the wolf does not live in South America. Geographical Barriers and Climate One of these reasons is the geographical barrier between North and South America. Today, the Panama Land Bridge serves as a connection between the two continents. Around 2.7 million years ago, the Great American Biotic Interchange began, when this land bridge rose to the surface of the ocean and many species crossed from north to south and vice versa. But this occurred way before wolves had made it from Eurasia into North America. That happened just 20,000 to 40,000 years ago, during the late Pleistocene. This meant that any species already on either side of Panama were already settled in their habitats and had been thriving here long before the wolves made an appearance. Not least of all, the Smilodon, which would have given the grey wolf a run for its money. The evolutionary journey of the grey wolf is a long and complex one, but it led to them being incredibly well adapted to colder climates and hunting sizable prey in relatively open habitats neither of which were found in northern South America. The caniforms began to evolve and diverge around 43 million years ago. The Eusian species of canid that first emerged in North America evolved into the genus Canis, which includes wolves. These very early dog-like forms migrated from North America to Eurasia around 5 million years ago. It was then in Eurasia that the wolf lineage emerged. Canis chiliensis was one of the first canines to have a large body size. Around the size of a modern grey wolf, these ancestors inhabited northern China around 3 to 4 million years ago. But it wasn't until the early Pleistocene, 1.8 million years ago, that the diversification of the Canis genus took off. 
They spread across Eurasia, evolving into different species, including Canis mospacensis, which is thought to be a direct ancestor of today's grey wolves. When the seas retreated during the last glacial maximum, an area of land known as Beringia connected Eurasia to North America. The modern grey wolves, adapted for the cold and harsh environments of the north, were drawn to Beringia and the land bridge due to their prey-rich habitat. Juvenile mammoths, large herds of bison, wild horses, reindeer and musk oxen provided plenty of food for the packs of wolves that were always on the hunt. Once they had made the journey, the grey wolves thrived in North America. They had evolved to cope with the cold of the last ice age, but as they travelled south, the conditions were less conducive to their survival. The tropical and subtropical climates of South America weren't suitable for a species with thick, double-layered fur, wide paws for walking on snow, and a counter-current heat exchange system in their legs. If they had ventured into South America, they would have been met with dense tropical jungle and the prey species that lived there. The furthest south modern wolves in habitat is Mexico. These individuals are known as the Mexican wolf, Canis lupus bailei, and are a subspecies of the grey wolf. The population is considered endangered and consists of just 45 individuals, but they are native to the Sierra Madre and other regions of central and northern Mexico. But no other wolves live any further south than that. Food Availability Food availability is also a consideration when asking why wolves never migrated south of their current range. Aside from the South American climate and habitat being unsuitable for wolves, the species found within them aren't considered typical prey. Wolves have adapted to hunt in packs and take down mostly large ungulates like bison, elk and deer. Wolves have phenomenal stamina. They can chase prey in the open over many kilometers at night. They usually try to isolate a young or weak prey animal from its herd. Sometimes they will deliver a bite and then stand back and wait for the prey to become weak before going in for the kill. The wolves' hunting techniques and group cooperation wouldn't be suited to the conditions of the thick jungle, specifically the 100-mile-long Darien Gap lying between Panama and northern Colombia. There are, of course, open grasslands, not least of all the Pampas, which is a grassland encompassing more than 460,000 square miles across Argentina, Uruguay and Brazil. But to make the migration onto this grassland, the wolves would have to navigate a substantial amount of dense vegetation first. They would have to change their hunting techniques entirely. The only canid in South America known to hunt in packs is the bush dog. Although a lot smaller than grey wolves, these predators have been known to take down fully grown tapirs, pecaris, and rheas. If wolves made it onto the pampas, by now they likely would have been extirpated, just like the jaguar and guanaco. Much of the grassland has been destroyed to make way for ranching. It was once a rich and diverse habitat, home to some of South America's larger mammals, such as the puma, rhea, capybara, plains viscacha, maned wolf, marsh deer, and pampas deer. Now only smaller species remain, like the Brazilian guinea pig, poipu, pampas fox, white-eared opossum, and big hairy armadillo. Today, these species wouldn't be enough to sustain a wild grey wolf population, and the packs would have to retreat to more forested and mountainous regions in South America, as pumas have. These big cats that once fed in the species-rich pampas lost their prey to human development and agriculture. They were persecuted by farmers, and their populations became fragmented, forcing them to seek refuge in the less accessible regions. There is no place for wolves in South America. The climate and habitat are not favorable for an apex canid of its size and cold weather adaptations. They never dispersed further south than Mexico because there was no reason to. The prey they were skilled at hunting existed in colder, more tundra-like habitats, and that was plentiful further north. Although it is clear just how adaptable and resilient the wolf is, with once a far-reaching global range, South America presented too many challenges for them and was instead colonized by an abundance of other equally fascinating members of the Canid family. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and share it with your friends.
you can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.